Hi everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to generate some reinforcement bar using Revit structure and AutoCAD structural detailing. So we're going to start off in Revit and you can see here I've got a very simple beam with a notch out of it. Um, I've got no reinforcement in here at all. All I'm going to do is take the um, form work out to structural detailer and in structural detailing we'll actually put in all of the reinforcement bar. So I'll start off by selecting the beam and then we'll go to the extensions ribbon. And in the extensions ribbon here, you'll see that we have uh, links out to AutoCAD structural detailing. Um, in a previous blog, actually, in video, I showed you the steel detailing link. Uh, what I'm going to do now is use the reinforcement drawings link. So it's launching the extension. just takes a few moments. Okay, and in here, what I'm able to do is tell it uh, whether to make a new project or go into an existing drawing. So I'm going to use an existing drawing here. We want to bring this information directly back into uh, Revit structure once I've finished. Uh, this is how it's going to name the element in ASD. Um, it does start off by using the Revit ID, uh, which is fine. I'll just change that in ASD later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ASD to generate that information. Okay, so that's now done. So we'll switch across to Structural Detailer, and you'll now see that AutoCAD Structural Detailing has drawn all of the formwork and added all of my various different dimensions in and given me three sections by default. First thing I'm going to do is just uh, adjust these sections a little bit. Um, what's basically happening here is you can see I've got hidden detail on section AA and that's purely because the section's looking too deep. So I'll just pull that back there. We'll do the same with B as well. Again, I just want it to cut through the thin portion of the beam there. Okay. Now before I go too far, what I'm going to do is just rename this, okay, uh, like I say, I don't want it to have that uh, <laughs> that element ID after there, so we'll just say this is going to be a B1, for example. Okay, whoops. Alright, okay, that's done. Right, so before we actually start putting bar in, I just want to introduce you to some of the uh, standards and settings in here. So if I go into uh, preferences first, First thing you'd really need to do is get yourself a template set up and you can see here that in the preferences and the options here we can dictate what template we start up for reinforcement drawings or steel drawings. If you go to your job preferences, what the job preferences enable us to do is actually set up our codes. So if I go to codes and materials here, you can see I'm running on 8110 within my template and I'm producing drawings to BS8666-2005. Good thing is all of this is database driven as well, so you can now see I'm linking into a database here. And what's happening in this database is it's holding all of the um, uh, bar bending rules in there. It's also holding things like maximum bar length, and you can change this for each bar type. So, for example, when I get into say 50 diameter bars, you know, I possibly wouldn't want uh, a sort of 50 meter length of that, so I can actually start to reduce those bar lengths. So all of this would need to actually be set up along with the display styles and so on. Um, another thing you'd need to actually get done is your reinforcement description styles. So basically when it comes out and tags things, how, how these tags going to look, what standards do we want to use. Now some of these you can see I've got um, my own styles actually set up, but some of them you'll have multiple styles set up yeah, down in here depending on um, how you want it to be displayed. So again, all of that would need to be configured and set as well. Right, okay, well let's start to put some rebar into the model here. So I'll start off by putting a link in. Okay, and in this example here, I'm going to pick my um, steel grade, and we'll just have uh, eight there, and I'll go for 35 mil cover. I'm going to tell it to use a normal link here. We've got some hooks set up here. Again, uh, within that database I was telling you about, it tells you the maximum length of hooks and and so on. So it won't let you do anything that's uh, not to standard. So what I'm going to do here is pick an internal point. Okay, and we'll place that, that link in there. Good, so that's the first one done. We'll repeat that. And we'll put a smaller link in section B. Okay. So, what we're now going to do is we're going to get some uh, longitudinal barring down on here. So, I'll go to reinforcement elevation. Again, choose my steel grade. And we'll go for a 12 here. So we'll set our cover in there. 
And what I'm going to do here is actually sketch the reinforcement. Now, when you do this and do it by points, um, ASD will automatically try and recognise the shape based on what you draw. So we go to points. Always try and draw your bar um, clockwise so it comes out on the wrong, uh, on the right way round. Otherwise, it will be wrong. Okay, and we'll now tag that. Okay, you can see it puts bar mark on there. So we, we can obviously position these exactly where we want. And again, this is what your styles and standards are setting up, how it positions these, how far away, what font, what colour and so on. So while we're here, I'm just going to mirror that across. So you can just use um, standard CAD tools if you want to, to mirror things. Right, and now I think we're ready to actually start to do some distribution of bar. Now obviously I've only got one uh, bar in here at the moment. So I'm going to basically um, use point distribution. Okay, we'll select the bar that we're distributing and I'm going to pick my segment which is going to be here. And straight away you'll see it puts points down. So we'll ask it to generate four bars through there. Okay, and you can see I've got 100 space in there at the moment. I'll go with that, that's absolutely fine. So we'll say OK there. And now how we want to mark the bar. So literally I'm just going to get it to put a bar mark on here and here. Yep. And there we go, so it's bar mark 3. Now, as soon as that's happened, you'll now see that it updates the tag here and we've got four B12s running along the bottom. OK, so what I'm going to now do is distribute the links. So yeah, we'll create a, a, a range. So we'll select the object, tell it the direction of distribution, and here I'm going to use a module. Yeah, so we'll go from here to here. It's asking me to position the first bar. Um, what I often find here is it's quite useful to actually have a, um, a sort of a cover line drawn, as if it were, or, or you can use tracking, whatever you want to do there. And now I put in the number and the spacing. So I'm going to have um, 10 bars at 150 space. Okay, now 10 takes me to there, so I obviously need a few more. So I can, you can see I can just move my cursor backwards and forwards to what I want there. Okay, and now we'll uh, mark that. So we'll pick a bar, let's show that one there, yep. and place our range. And again, you can see I've got 18 bars there. And if we come back through um, to the uh, leader there, you can now see that's updated with 18 as well. Okay, we'll also do the smaller link while we're here. So we'll pick on that link there, and again, distribute those. This time I'm just going to use a zone. Now, you can see it's gone the wrong way now because I haven't uh, run clockwise, but you can just flip the side there on the command bar if you want to as well. Again, I'm going to start the zone right there and end it right there. So this time, we'll go for 100 space in there. Oh, you know, you can tell it how many bars you want, or indeed, you could even put in the area you require. Yeah, so if I put in 6 there, then it calculates accordingly. Yeah, but we'll go back to 100 there. Say OK there. And again, pick our bar that we want to detail. Say this one here. Yeah, place our range like so okay now of course you can uh, mirror these ranges as well if you want to oops let's do that again so we'll mirror that cross into there okay and so on I could then continue to uh, finish that now the only other thing I want to show you here is a uh, little bit more of an advanced thing really, but what I'm going to do is um, detail this up now. So I'm going to again put a link in here, like so. Now what I'm going to show you here is um, a varying distribution. So if I go back to uh, distribution again and we pick the link, I'm going to say varying uh, linear. Okay, and again we could do a module there and the uh, viewing direction. Now first thing it wants me to do is actually slice the link where it's going to be varying or changing so we'll go through there and then we pick the internal point of distribution so I'm literally just going to define the area that I want it to distribute in like so 
uh, distribution direction I'm going to do by two points so we'll just do uh, 2p there now I'm going to run it I want it to actually run along there okay and first bar we'll have there so here again I can say 10 at 150 maybe again and place all of those out and again I can pick a link maybe that one there and show that now what I'm going to do here is actually um, separate this from this beam so we'll go forward and actually create a new uh, element here on my element manager so this will be B2 maybe might have two of these in the project select our information okay and you can now see I've got B2 there and again here I could create just some basic views of that as well so we'll say new view Okay, let's put first view around there and this will be B2 section okay and we'll make another new view through there B2 elevation okay so if we go into positions here you can now see that I have all of that information shown now obviously we want um, a table to come out of this eventually at some point as well so if I went for a, uh, an element table here yeah, you'll see now we have a schedule appeared and you can see I've got B1, B2, how many of each we've got lengths, shape codes all in there and so on or I could do a main table and this will basically show me everything yeah. now you'll notice if we just zoom in here if we look at bar mark 4 yeah, which will be this one here obviously that's tapering so you can see here I've got average length now of course you wouldn't possibly want that so what you can actually do is you can have a detailed table as well so if I went back to a detailed table and I went to selection and I actually pick the, the object there then you can see that it actually details out every single link which is quite nice and then of course you've got summary tables as well so if I went to um, a normal uh, bar summary table in there yeah, then we get total weights of bar and lengths of bar which is very useful okay so finally I'll just quickly show you how to make some drawings in here so I'm going to go into printouts here and just activate one of my sheets here so you can see it's a pretty standard sheet there back to positions and now I'm able to actually start to uh, set the drawing out so I could say add to current printout in here yep, so there's my first view in do the same with the section again add to current printout now we'll do the same for these as well so this is basically ASD's drawing manager works really nicely yeah, nice and easy to do okay and there's uh, there's my drawing all nicely finished okay last thing I really need to show you then if I just uh, quickly save this if we now zip back into Revit structure like so I'm going to have a look at uh, some drafting views here Basically, what's happened is ISD's automatically now pulled all of that information straight back in. Okay, so of course then, this can actually form part of my Revit structure job. Okay, hope that's been useful for everyone. Thanks very much.